haptoglobin is a glycoprotein made by the liver. It has a few different functions, but the function we care about most in clinical practice, i.e. we would check a haptoglobin level, is usually we're looking to see if it's low. One important job of haptoglobin is to bind hemoglobin. When red blood cells break apart and release all their hemoglobin into the bloodstream, heme molecules are pro-inflammatory. So haptoglobin actually acts as an antioxidant by binding free heme and then taking it to the endothelial cells and to the liver to be recycled. So when would a haptoglobin B level be low? Most of the time we send that level when we're concerned that there is hemolysis going on, abnormal red blood cell breakdown that's clinically relevant. Other circumstance where it could be low is in liver disease because haptoglobin is made by the liver. Haptoglobin is also an acute phase reactant, um, and so it will go up in states of inflammation. When we're trying to evaluate for hemolysis, haptoglobin is one test that we may use to help support that. Um, other tests we'll commonly send are a lactate dehydrogenase. This is an enzyme inside of cells that it will be increased as cells are turning over more rapidly, as in cases of hemolysis, but also in uh, cases of rapid cell turnover like lymphoma. Indirect bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin is going to be increased in hemolysis as those red blood cells break down and are turned into bilirubin before they are conjugated by the liver. And the reticulocyte count. If the bone marrow function is normal but red blood cells are breaking down, the bone marrow is trying to keep up, the bone marrow will release young red blood cells in greater proportion than normal. Those young red blood cells are called reticulocytes, and when they're increased in the blood, we call that reticulocytosis. Hope that helps follow for more about blood.